milestone reports with RDI and Rational Insight. Um, this is our eighth year at Ironside and Rational of doing these webcasts with the intent of informing and educating people on the Ironside, or excuse me, the IBM Rational Solutions. Today's topic is uh, viewing custom reports within CLM applications. Um, I'm going to be presenting it. It's mostly going to just gonna be pretty much so a demonstration. So this, this series is meant to be a, a hands-on series, kind of just a, a full demonstration. I'm, I have these uh, once a month following our standard reporting webcast. Um, uh, my name is Eric Larson. I've been uh, in the reporting space for a number of years. I was the product manager for Rational Insight at IBM for a while. Um, I'm currently now a reporting solutions architect uh, working for Iron, the Ironside Group and the Ironside Rational brand, uh, specializing in, in the rational reporting tools. Before we begin, I'll cover some of the basic housekeeping issues. All the lines are currently muted to avoid background noise. If you have any questions or uh, uh, comments, type them in the chat or questions window. I'll be monitoring them during the call. I can open up your line if you want to have an interactive conversation, but for now, um, I'm planning on keeping the lines muted. Um, we're going to contact both of you after the uh, call and see if you want a recording of the presentation or any additional information about the products training or consulting. Uh, thanks for attending, and I hope you find this uh, useful. So I'm going to go ahead and take it away. So like I said, today's topic is about uh, um, viewing custom reports within, uh, within a CLM application. So what I want to do is I want to start, uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen. I'm going to start here by, by uh, I'm, I'm logged into RTC. I'm going to wait. I've got the, the view here. I just want to make sure we get the screen up. There we go. It looks like, looks like the, it, 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 it's, it's presenting. I'm looking at the audience view. So um, within my, uh, my, my CLM application here, I've got RTC up with a CCM application. Um, you know, the standard way that we normally view it is we log in and we see a dashboard with lots of widgets showing um, either charts or reports coming from um, one of the different reporting engines that can have queries, it can have you know a number of different uh, different objects here. Um, they also have a, within the, the uh, CLM applications, they all have a reports perspective where I can go and look at some of the out-of-the-box reports. Um, it also enables me to uh, go out and uh, and view and and author custom reports. So if I go straight to the report perspective here. Um, Make sure it comes up here. I'm just waiting for the screen to change. Let me try to see if it shares it. For some reason, it's not updating. I'm sharing just that one application. I'm going to try to update and just uh, try to change it. So I'm sharing my whole screen. Let me try that. I apologize. I'm monitoring. I just want to make sure the screen is getting updated properly. See if I can go to my reports. All right, so for now I'm going to go to uh, the my reports perspective here. Okay, so it looks like the my reports perspective is there. So if I look at this, these are all the reports that I've got, I've got access to. I can also look at uh, like kind of shared reports and look at what what reports are being shared that others have access to as well. Um, so this is a, a list of what are the out of the box reports that that come with. Uh, the CLM applications. Um, I'm just waiting for it to update on my screen here. All right, so now I can look at with the CLM applications. I have uh, a number of shared reports that I've got access to here. Um, if I look at any of these different topics, I should be able to drill down and look at some of the uh, the uh, reports that are categorized by like build, planning, source control, and work items. But uh, if you in order to go and start creating reports that are, are uh, that are not out of the box, there's a number of options. One is to use the Rational Reporting for Development Intelligence RDI or uh, Rational Insight tools that are both optional. The RDI currently comes with CLM, and, R and Insight is a extended version that allows you to kind of go outside of the, the standard uh, CLM single JTS scenario and pull data from other tools. So if I if I jump quickly over to my uh, 
uh, um, let me pull this across, over to my uh, insight or my, uh, my rational reporting perspective, I now should be able to see these are the, uh, this now I've kind of looked in, I've got rational insight loaded here. And I can see here's my standard rational insight view. Um, I'm now looking at a folder where I have a couple of different custom reports here that I've, I've created for this particular demonstration. One is a, a list of requirements by test cases and the other is with a prompt page. So if I look at the first one, the requirements by test cases, let's run this first and show you the kind of the simple report I've created. Um, so I've come in and I want to see a list of, of requirements organized by, maybe by, by status type. Right in here I've got, I've got my requirement type on the left, you know, actor, business case. Um, if I drill, if I start scrolling down, I can look at other types of business goal. There's um, uh, various types uh, on, the, on the other columns here. So I've got them grouped by requirement type within the re particular requirement type. I look at the status, the approved and draft requirements. Um, under each category here, now I'm looking at uh, you know, the different requirements that are listed. Here's my requirement name. These are the different requirements I've got listed coming from the QM application in the CLM suite. And then finally on the right, associated with those, what are the test cases we've written that are associated with those requirements? So spanning uh, are the requirements management and the quality management domain. So sort of a traceability report so I can see all the test cases written to test a particular requirement in a particular state on a particular requirement type. So a great little report, kind of gives me a nice holistic view of all my requirements um, uh, across any particular project. In this case, I don't have it filtered. Um, a second report I've created, so this is a great one, but now let's say I want to go and look at the same data, but I want to be able to kind of slice and dice it a little bit. I want to look at it and be able to control what requirement type or what status field I'm looking at. So to do that, um, I've authored a, a second report. Um, all right, so now I've got, it, I've got one of the prompts. So in this case, the second report here is going to prompt me for what requirement uh, type I want to view. So it's a nice way of, of you know, configuring and controlling um, and, and selecting at runtime what data I want to see. So here I've created a prompt page and I'll show you where this prompt page exists and how it got created. But now I can select which requirement type and which requirement status to include in that, uh, in that particular report. So I'll go with the business process diagram because it looks like that one has some, some interesting data. If I save or run the report, it's going to go ahead and take that data, process it, and now I can see quickly um, the, just the business process diagram requirements. Um, I can see that there's two. There's the approved, two statuses approved and draft. I can see again all the different requirements that are in those different stat status categories and the names of the test cases. All right, so these are two reports I've gone and authored. If I want to look a little bit deeper at how that was done, I'll show you just because this is a report writing series, I'll go a little bit deeper and show you where that's done. If I click on the little triangle, in the upper right, it takes me to the report authoring perspective, um, and I should be able to hop in and now look at, uh, in, in the Cognos Report Studio tool, look at how that report was set up. And I'll show you just a couple things real quickly in this area before I import this into my CLM reports view or my, and my CLM dashboard. So it's initializing. I haven't run uh, Cognos uh, this morning, so it's just taking a couple minutes here. Um, allow access to my clipboard so I can copy and paste things. And then I come up in my, my standard Cognos Report Studio perspective. It's the, 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 the graphical view of, of how I go and lay out and, and author these reports. So what we'll see on the right-hand side, so this is a standard list view that we create. So it's just creating a list of artifacts. Um, the, the artifact type, by, we're doing requirement type. I can see um, in the, uh, in, in the the header of the, the table of the list, I can see that there's a little triangle next to requirement type indicating that I've told it to sort that, so it's going to sort the list of requirements um, by requirement type. Um, next in the list, next in the next column is status, so the status of the requirement, the requirement name, and the test case. In order to group them, so we saw the grouping there where was all the requirement types were grouped together, um, there's this little uh, like kind of page icon associated with it. Um, which essentially is the, the group ungroup icon. So up here on the top is where I would go and select that I want to either group or ungroup that, and it'll group it by that particular attribute, throw them all in one big cluster, and then I can see them cascading below that. Now, 
this is that second report I created. So what I wanted to do with this one was I wanted to prompt for and only show data for a particular requirement type and a particular requirement status. And to do that, that required me to do two things. One was uh, behind this particular report, there's an underlying query that gets executed. And in that query, I had to create a filter that basically filters out and only shows data that meets my particular criteria. So in this case, the criteria was that I wanted the requirement status to be equal to a prompted status, that, that P status, the question marks made it the prompt that I've created. Um, and I'm just waiting for the screen to catch up. Okay, so here we are. We're, now we're looking at the screen. So the P status field is the telling it it wants to look at only requirements where the status is equal to a prompted value. And then my requirement type prompt is the same thing where it's looking for a P requirement typed prompt. Now where these get set, where this all kind of ties together is under the page perspective, I can look at my prompt page I created for this report. And that's where I laid out that, that, that nice little prompt page you saw with the black header on it and I have a list of requirement types and requirement statuses. Each of these has a prompt control in it, and that prompt control essentially says when someone enters this, set that particular parameter, the P requirement type parameter, or the P status parameter to be what was selected, and when you run it, it will essentially filter it by those attributes. Very simple little prompt page created, but that's the basic mechanics for any report when you want to have it prompt for values. You can Generally speaking, you put a prompt page on it. When we want it, when we go to add a report to a CLM application, if you want it to prompt for data, you need to create a prompt page to do it properly. Um, if you've got prompt, if you've got parameters that are specified on a prompt page, then you can easily get those filled in on your CLM application. All right. So now we see the report. We've run it once within our CLM application. I'm now going to go and uh, and switch back to my CL, my, my J, uh, RTC application. So if I look back here under RTC, uh, let's see what that message was. Bam, bam. All right. So now I'm within my back to my RTC application. I'm going to go through. So now I'm in my shared reports. Now, in, in order to expose or import a report from the a custom report from your RDI or inside engine, you've got to go through a couple of steps. One, you have to create a resource for the custom report in the resource perspective. So if I come back here under reports and go to report resources, let it catch up for a minute. So here I'm going to get a list of all the resources that I've got access to for this particular project. Um, and then, then what I'm going to want to do is create a resource from this custom report. And that will enable me to go and reach into my, my custom reports engine, Cognos, Cognos Custom Reports Engine, whether it's RDI or Insight, and pull that report into CLM. And I'm going to try, let's see, I'm going to try to close this window. I just want to close this window because we're being a little sluggish on it. And let me try to... I'm going to try to just restart this here real quick. And let me just real quickly, uh, there we go, um, log back into RTC. And just give me a minute while it logs back into, into RTC. I am in a, 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 I'm not connected in my normal way, so it's a little slower than normal.
So just one more time. So I get back into RTC here. There we go. Beautiful. Seems like it's a little bit quicker as well. So, so let me go back to my reports perspective. Now, like I said, we have to go to the report resources view to show a list of the reports that I have access to. So here's all the report resources. In order to, to now access or import and, and run a report from my custom reporting engine, we have to essentially create a resource for that report. And there's an icon up here in the upper right that says create resource from custom report. Okay, so here if I click on this, um, and uh, let me make sure I'm not paused, there we go. If I click on this, it's gonna go and bring up a dialog to enable me to create a resource, to import this custom report. And let me make sure I'm still showing my application. I apologize, it seems a little bit slow today as it's, it's communicating back and forth between these applications. But so now we're on the create resource screen. Now what it's doing at this point is it's connecting out to my custom report server, out to Insight, and it's getting on the bottom, bottom screen was just populated here. So now I can get a list of all of my custom reports that are out on my, my RDI or Insight server. So if I expand this, I'm gonna click into my folders my 2015 CLM reporting series folder, and here's those two reports that I was just working with, my requirements for test cases, and my, with my requirements for test cases with the prompt page. So right now I'm just gonna import the first one, give it a name, um, I'm gonna call it Insight Insight requirements for test cases. So there's my nice thing, I'm gonna give it a name, and when you import a, a Create a resource, you have to create an identifier for it. For this case, I'm just going to create, give it the same name. And I'll talk in a minute about special characteristic identifiers. If I save this, it's going to go ahead and now it saves that report resource and it's out there for me to use. So now if I go into my reports perspective, let's see, now it's reloading it. After you save it, it does establish that connection again so you can create another resource so it's again connecting back out to your uh, report server. So now if I look in my reports, right, I've got the list of reports I've got, uh, I've, I've done in the past. If I want to create a new report, it's going to come up and on the right hand side of this panel are all the resources that, are, that exist that I have access to. And I should see my new Insight report resource that I just created. So here's the Insight requirements for test case report. I'm going to give it that same name in my report. I'm going to put it in my folders and go ahead and save it. And then there's my standard, when I import it, there's a standard screen that comes up. There's no prompting on this one, so I always kick run. It's gonna run that report. And then I see the same thing I saw before. I see my list of requirements by status. So here I'm looking and I've successfully gone and accessed one of my reports that are sitting on my, my custom report server, my Insight or RDI server. I've gone and created a report resource for it and pulled it over into my reports perspective. So now I have that accessible to myself or I could put it in my shared view and anybody else could see that. Um, so what's next is uh, I'm gonna, uh, we, we've successfully seen this one. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna go through the process of adding a report, creating a widget on a dashboard that exposes the report. And what I wanna do with this one is I wanna do it a little bit differently because I want to be able to add it to a dashboard widget that enables me to interact with the prop controls. Okay, to do that we have to do a special, we have to do something special with the tag or the identifier we give it. So I'm gonna go back to report resources. I'm gonna go and create a custom, create a second resource. I'm gonna use that second report for this one now. So I'm back on my custom resources view. And when I get the list, I'm gonna use that, pull in that, that, that report resource, pull in that report from my custom report server that had the prompt page on it. So if I click on the, custom reports, uh, I click on my folders again, because it's my own one, my 215, and here's my requirements with test case with the prompt page. So I'm gonna go again, call Insight, requirements um, 
And I'm going to actually name this one a little bit differently. I'm going to put a micro in here. One of the features of CLM is if you have the word micro in your identifier for a report, it will then be accessible to the report widget. It, so it treats those specially. It's a special category, a micro report, that then lets you interact with it and supply props. So this is a mad little piece of magic here. Under the identifier, I have to include micro. So I'm going to call this one insight.micro. Requirements with test cases. So now when I go look for it, that's going to be the identifier for it, and the name will show up in the standard, in the standard, uh, whatever the name I have will show up by the list. But if it has the word micro in the identifier, it shows up and it's accessible to this report widget. So it's a great little feature here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and demonstrate where we can see that. So I saved it, now it's just reloading its list. And once we be on this, now I'm going to go back to my, my standard dashboard. So I've created this resource for this, this micro resource. If I go back to my, CL, my CM dashboard, I've got all my standard, standard dashboard. I've got a, a page over here on my dashboard that I've enabled RDI slash insight. And if I click on that, right now there's no widgets on that, no, no, nothing on that at all. So I want to go ahead and add a widget to this page. So this is where I want to go and add a widget that's going to let me view that custom report on a dashboard. So now it's going out loading all of the widgets it has accessible to it. Um, I'm not seeing it a whole lot faster than you are, but it should be up here in just a second. Let me try to close this window. Maybe I'll speed it up a little. Try this again, let me click on add widget, let me see if it'll come back. I apologize for the connection speed here. Um, there we go, so now it looks like it's coming back. So here's all the widgets I have accessible to me. Um, if I click on the left here, now one thing to note in this widget, if you haven't had experience with a lot of experience, up here there's a different, different code of catalogs. I'm in the CCM application, so it's showing me all the widgets available for CCM. I can select a number of other catalogs as well. I can select quality management, team server requirements manager, or jazz reporting service. So this is how I get access to, to uh, widgets for different domains. I'm going to, for, for now, stick with my CCM. If I click on the reports perspective, it just shows me the, the, the different report widgets that are available. And as I go through, I'm going to go through, and there should be, uh, as I go through, there's a report category. So I'm going to add this, this report widget, which lets me kind of add a report um, to my dashboard. And once I've added it, I'm going to hit next to close that. And now I have my report widget here that I just created. And now I want to configure it. And this is where I'll configure it and point it at which resource to use. So here's the project name. The resource I want to look for my, in my Insight Micro Report. Um, it should be up top. So here's my Insight Micro Requirements with Test Cases. So that's the one I just went ahead and created. Right? And th there it is. So if I run it now, it should run it without I haven't set what prompt values to put in there, so it's just going to go ahead and run it and it should show me the, uh, the full unfiltered list. So it should show me the list just like we saw before with the unprompted version, and we can see it all because I haven't actually entered in any values to prompt by, so it's showing me the entire report list. So let me wait for the screen to catch up. So there it is. So now we can see here's that same list we saw, right? And so, so no big deal, but we don't really see any prompting done yet. But we did have a prompt page on this report. So what I wanted to really kind of highlight was that we do have access to those prompts within this particular widget. So if I now look, if I go and readjust the settings for this particular widget again. Now here I've got, again, this is my Insight Micro Report. Down under the query, so hidden under here, if I click on this, what it's going to do is it's going to reach into that special report, that custom report, and look at the prompt page and pull out the, and essentially execute or, or display that prompt page here for me to go ahead and interact with. So now I click on query, it's going out, look at that report, and lo and behold, here's that same prompt page that's in my insight report. So if I now filter it by business process diagrams, I click the save run, it's going to go ahead and essentially go ahead and save those, those parameters, and then I'll say okay after I've saved it. OK. 
okay. I said, okay. Save, run. That's do it. My screen to catch up. Come on, let's try it one more time. Select. Uh, it looks like it selected something. So I'm going to say OK now. And now it's running the report. It should run it with the, the parameters that I had set. And now what we what we see here is just like before, I went in and I, I put in the business process diagram as the filter on there um, for the requirement type, and it's only showing me business process diagram uh, requirements. So if I want to again, if I want to modify it again, I can look at the settings here. If I hit select, let's say I only want to look at uh, approved requirements in that list, not drafts, because I in this particular case I want to see the the, the test cases for the approved, I can now I can also select on the requirement status. I'll click on save again and then OK. And then confirm that it should run it and now I should I should be filtering it again now just by requirement type and status. Now this is a fairly fairly particular a simplified example, but as you can imagine I could have I could add prompts in there for a number of things. I could have a roll over an aggregation of data across every project or across 10 different projects, um, which is where I think some of the uh, the power of Insight comes in. I can create a single report that shows me an aggregation of requirement status across all, every project in my, uh, you know, across multiple Jazz team servers, and then I can filter it and drill down into a particular project, a particular release, a particular sprint or iteration. So a way of rolling up data. If I had that report, that's this is how I would access those parameters and show it on my on this particular dashboard. All right, so I think we still have just three of us on the call. Um, that was pretty much what I wanted to show. As I said, now I've seen it here. The last thing I'll show is remember I did create that report uh, within my reports. I should also have the unfiltered report here within my uh, unprompted report it should show up in my reports view. That was the insight report with test cases. If I click on that, this was the one I created without a prompt page. And it should go out and run the report um, without prompting for any values. And, and on these report, when you import a custom report, it always puts up this dialog that I have to click through. The nice thing about um, the report widget is you don't have you don't have that that extra dialog when you run the report. It just shows up normally. All right, so that pretty much wraps up what I wanted to cover in this first session of my hands-on rational report writing series. Um, I'm going to just quickly, uh, if you don't mind, let me take both of you guys off of mute. So if you're chatting or you're off doing something else, I'm going to try to Brian if you're on or David. I've now Let's see if it'll let me do that. Trying to unmute you. Uh... Anyway, so if you guys have any, for some reason, uh, go to webinars, not enable me to take you off of mute. Um, if you have any questions or comments or anything else you want me to show uh, about this particular topic, type them in the question window or the chat window. I'll be happy yeah. to go into that subject. Yes? If not, I'll pretty much wrap it up. So, Brian, uh, thank you. There was just three of us, uh, Brian and David uh, and myself. Um, and let's see. I'll go ahead, David. I'll, I'll go ahead and type in the question. I, it doesn't look like I can uh, unmute you or I just chat with you directly. Oh, there we go. David, I think I've got you unmuted if you want to talk. I think I think I am. So what's the difference between the report widget and the custom report widget? That's a great question. So the report widget 
has this really great feature that enables me to access but that little query selector enables okay. me to access the parameters on our prompt page. The custom report widget essentially is just it's basically a widget that lets me look at the report that's on the screen now, put that standard report resource without any prompting in it on my pay on my dashboard. So what I have found in my practice in doing this is I, I'm, these days I'm leaning towards always using the report widget if I have a, in fact for almost anything, I'm, I'm using it for anytime I especially have prompting in one of my RDI reports, use a report widget because then it's going to prompt me, just the same prompt page will display. It's a really easy way to do interactions and, and be able to filter data on the, uh, on, on the dashboard. With the, with the custom report widget, if you want to look at data only slice and dice, if I, if I wanted to set it for just a particular, like the actor requirement type or the approved requirements, I would have to go and save it, save the report as a report view up in the Cognos server okay. and import okay. the, that report view as a customer, as a report resource. Okay. The report Got widget it. really gives me that ability to, to, to be very much, you know, to, to interact with the report, the Cognos report or the customer report mm -hmm. exactly like you intended and allow, allow it to run on a dashboard, be able to set some filters for it and be able to come back and let, let the user modify those filters as they need and save them for themselves okay. within the CLM application. All right. So the report widget gives you the ability to, to access the prompt page that you build into the report. Exactly. Okay. Um, there was one more I had. Oh, I noticed that the prompts look different. <laughs> okay, and that yeah, you, uh, uh, did you like the way those look? Whether you liked them or not doesn't really matter. So the, the prompt pages did look a little different, and I'll show you why. And that's really only because of styling I put on those. So if I go into my my report here. Hold on, let me click on it. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and open up this report again within uh, within Report Studio, and I'll show you what I had done with that. So it really was nothing more than just putting some some blocks on my prompt page and adjusting the look and feel of those. So the in my opinion, the out of the box Cognos reports are a little bit Cognos prompt pages are a little kind of dull and they, they, they're, they're just very minimal so I tried to make them look a little bit better I was playing with them for this particular webcast um, to, to, to see what I could do to spice them you know kind of make them a little bit more visually appealing I thought it was really I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of go back in just a second and look at it so you put blocks and then fill in the colors and sort of exactly. okay I don't know why I didn't open up that report Right again. Yeah, so I put a block, put a, uh, I'll show it to you in just a second. Again, I apologize for the connection speed. I'm in a conference room connecting through a, a hotspot on, on a mobile phone. so. It's actually, it's, uh, considering what I have to go through to get the, get the presentation running, it's actually running decent. Is, is it an iPhone? Uh, it's actually using a BlackBerry, even worse. Oh, that, that's why it's not working. <laughs> My iPhone was even slower. All right. So, so uh, I guess what you did was you, you created a, prop, a value prop, then you put some blocks around it and colored them in. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And I put a block up top and it colored it black and I added the uh, the prompt buttons in that. So it's really just in yeah, that I think that's just some, some of the little stuff I didn't use any style sheets. I didn't use anything any, any special about just color coding. The one thing, so if you if you play with that at all, I also tried in my testing. I'm here let me I'll show you one of the just if you ever because it sounds like you've got and I'm not sure what your background is, but it sounds like you've got some decent cognos experience. So yeah, I just I created some blocks here. So, so basically, here's a block here that's colored back. You know, the background of it's colored black. Right. With you know another block within that. Here I've got the you know a color coded. Uh, uh, I think it's like a, another block with my text requirement type text in it. Uh, right. Go back. 
right? And then these are just my, my prompt <coughs> One of the things I tried to do, this is something to be careful of, just this is a, a heads up, is you can set some, like, uh, if you set the background effect of it, you can set, like, like rounded borders and, and right. drop shadows and whatnot. Right. And Once the I that, it didn't import into CLM very well. It, it, it got a out-of-bounds exception trying to pull that in. So for some reason, it didn't like the custom effects on it, so I had to stick with the straight squared, squared right. off back. And the, the buttons, and the buttons are added as insertable objects? These here? Yeah. So all I did here, just real quick, a uh, quick question. So I just added a, you know, just, just any uh, prompt button? Uh-huh. So any prompt button can be added here, right? So here's another. But what you can do here, which is kind of nice, so it's got the standard next. If you add a, a text item onto a prompt button, uh -huh. you can control what it says. So you can just totally, yeah, this is my button. Right. But when you add a, a, a prompt button, how do you control what it actually does? Is that so, built in? So here's my button. So if you click on this, the, 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 it controls by what type it is, right? So the, the different types of prompt buttons are okay. either a cancel, a back, next, finish, or reprompt. Okay, so their actions are pre or or they're preset. So the the one up here, the save run button is a. If I look at this prompt button. This is a finish button, and cancel the cancel button. Right. Okay. And I use reprompt with just in case you have a cascading prompt. That the first one is not a auto submit. It will re 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 execute that without actually submitting it. Right. So yeah, we have some time. We have some time left. I wonder whether we can go off topic a little bit. I'm happy to go off topic. What do you need? Okay. So there's there's quite a well. There's not actually that much information on how to build reports out there online. Um, Ironside itself has some some good things, uh, and most of them build off the ODS, but very few of them actually point to the metrics. Yeah. Part of this. So I was wondering if you could show a little bit about what the metrics tables do in terms of trending. Um, if there's something simple that we can do, like defects over time or something like that. Yeah, so let's look here. Let me go back and I'll, I'll actually, let's try to do that real quickly. I'm going to go, I'm not going to save this. I'm just going to go ahead and go. Hopefully it'll keep up with me. And let's just do a, uh, a chart here maybe. Right, and we're going to code. We're going to, let's just create. Let's for now. Let's just do a simple uh, a 3D bar chart. Why not? And I'm going to do this one's going to be pretty simple. I'll, I'll do uh, using one of those tables up here. Um, if I look at the uh, the change management area, so these are the different areas in our. Uh, let's make sure we're keeping up. It looks like it's keeping up okay. So here's all of our, our areas within the the metrics area or the dimensional model. Mm -hmm. If I look at the request, let's look at the request closure metric. I want to look at how many defects have been closed over time. So if I look at the request closure metrics, I have my closure. So this is the closure count. It's actually a measure. So what it's going to do is give okay. me a count of how many defects were closed. I'll drag that onto my default, my y-axis. And now the metric is going to show me how many defects were closed. And on my, my x-axis down here, I want to look at that over a particular time period. So I'm going to go through and look at that under my, uh, where's my, my date, um, closure date. So look at that under the date it was closed. So that's what these, these different dimensions are. So here I'm going to go through a closure date and let's look at it maybe by month. All right, so I'm going to drag months down here into my, my x-axis. So now I'm, I should see by month how many defects were closed. And let me do one more thing here. I'm going to look at the pipe. I want to do a, I want to have different bars. I want to group it by, let's say, what project that was on. So let's look here. Again, one more dimension is our project dimension. And we'll look at the... Uh, let's look at the project here. So I think this should drag right here. Now if I run it, though, this should show me a total number of defects closed by project by month. So I should have different different bars grouped by month. Let's run this really quickly. Okay. Now the, and I'll, I'll cover a couple things in just a second here. Let's just see if this goes through and does what I think it should do. All right. So now I can look at Closure metrics in May 2014 for mm -hmm. this project. Here's what I closed 30 metrics, 30, 30 okay. All right, so real simple way. Now, now it's just 
each one of those different uh, dimensional models, there's different measures for each one of those attributes that are preset for you. The other thing you can do is you can create your own measures. So if you did, say, like the defect closure, you want to know the number of defects that were in a particular state at any month, any time. You just have to create a, a, a data field, a numeric data item, and that numeric data item could be dragged on as the measure. So it doesn't have to be one of the out-of-the-box measures that are there. What I can count, and I've done this in other cases where, um, let's go back here. Instead of using the closure, I can go here and into the query where I've got the request details. So I can count and create a data item that looks at things like, you know, what's the state if the state is open. So I don't know why my, again, my connectivity is giving me a little trouble. Let's see if it'll do it this time. But as I say, you can create any numeric data item and drag that onto your default, your, your y-axis as your measure. Mm -hmm. So how would you create a, would it be a calculation or? It could be a calculation or it could be, so what I do often is if I want to look at it, if a, uh, like look at a current count of how many defects are in, let's say, the, what it, a particular state, like open mm -hmm. or closed, right, I could, if I go down here to the underlying query, Here's a quick way that I've done this in the past. So I'll go through and create a data item. Come on. Sis, I think you need to reboot your server. Yeah, no, it's not the server. It's my, uh, it's the, the, the uh, it's your connection. Yeah. So if I look at this here, now I can kind of go through, let's see, so I'm in, I was on change and config management, change management. Uh, my request closure metrics. If I look down here to the request detail, right, I can go like this, say if uh, my request uh, status, maybe, is that what it is? Request status. Request status is the grouping. Request state is the actual state. So would be that closed? And one. Right, so it's just a count, one or zero, whether it's closed or not. All right, mm -hmm. so I've got this, and then what I want to do is I want to set a, uh, a an aggregation function. So as it aggregates this and rolls it up, I want to go ahead and total how many of them there are. Okay. All right, and I'm going to call this thing my closed count. Closed defects, let's say, or closed work items. Those requests. All right, so now I've got a count of closed requests. So it should show me for any particular, you know, and I roll it up how many of them were closed as long as I got my, my spelling right. Once I do that, if I go back to my main page, instead of using closure here, I could, I could cut this off, and I can look over here at the metrics that are available to me. I could drag closed requests in here, and now it should show me the number of closed requests, the number of their enclosed. Now, in this case, closure is probably the same thing, so it should be pretty close to the same, but it could have been any other state. It was just an example of how I would go in and show that. Well, whatever, for whatever reason, I didn't like my, uh, I've got a quote, I think, off. Missing two parentheses, I believe. I think I, 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 think I need single quotes, not double quotes on the, uh, the thing there, but so that's, that's essentially what you would go do to create your metric there. Right. Okay, so when it, when it comes to metrics, then it's really playing around with it and just be, becoming familiar with what's, what's there and what you would need to extend. So it's, right. it's really what's just... The data model you want to work with. Knowing uh, that under the metric side, these are things that can just readily be dragged on to one of the, either here as a metric in the uh, y-axis of a chart or if you're using a cross-tab, you could have put it in a cross-tab as well, number of closed metrics, and you could have added a cross-tab there. Maybe when my, uh, and that's a good point, maybe my next, I'll maybe cover those in a little more detail in my next lesson as well. So it's a good off-topic, it's something leading into my next one. So you may not get as much value as others in the, uh, in the next one, but I think I'll cover cross-tabs and charts using the dimensional model in my next one. 